What is up, you guys? Welcome back to Title Gardens. This video is brought to you by Polyp Lab, who have been a longtime corporate sponsor of this channel. I've been a really big fan of their reef primer dip for some time. It's a potassium salt based coral dip, and we use it quite extensively here. This is a paid sponsorship, so let's get that very clear up front. But Polyp Lab had no input on the content of this video nor did they receive an advanced screening. With that out of the way, let's continue. Pest control is something that needs to happen at every level of this hobby. There was a time not that long ago when nobody at any stage did preventative dipping. But now that we're seeing coral propagation activities at the collector level, the wholesale level, the retail level, and the hobbyist level, People learn really quickly the value of preventative dips. Right off the bat, I want to say that there isn't a perfect dip out there for all situations. Here at Tidal Gardens, we use a lot of different products to accomplish very specific goals. Some dips might be better for certain pests or ailments. Some other dips might be too harsh for certain corals. And for those corals, we have to use a less intense product even though it's not exactly the ideal choice for a particular pest. So why reef primer? In short, I like it because it's effective enough on the things that I'm most worried about, and it is very gentle on the corals. The long version, I've got a little bit of a list. Let's start with that last point. Goal number one of any coral dip. Dipping is, by definition, an inherently stressful procedure for a coral, and I am looking to make that process as gentle as possible because the worst of all worlds is doing a pest control dip on a perfectly healthy coral and killing it. It's like that old saying, the operation was successful, but the patient died. This is compounded by the fact that there is a lot more nuance in dipping procedures than people give it credit for. It is very easy to mess something up, whether it is dipping a coral that is particularly sensitive to a certain kind of dip, or overdoing it with a dip that's too concentrated. Some dips are oil-based and they stratify, so if you're sitting there dipping and you don't get enough agitation in the water, eventually you have a thick layer of dip and you have your water. That nukes the portions of the coral that are in that intense section of oil-based dip. Things like that. Also, you can just do dips that are entirely inappropriate. I've got some goofy stories about what some people have done. There have been people who received a shipment of perfectly healthy corals and then decided to dip delicate Acropora in fresh water for 30 minutes. No idea where they got that idea, but they did it. I've had one person claim their clams died after a coral dip session. You don't say, right? And of course, in both of these cases, they wanted their money back. So if you think that the entire subject of dipping is a brainless topic, make no mistake, there are people that definitely need to hear this. Anyway, going back to my main point here, I like reef primer because across the board, it is the least likely to cause damage to the coral. Again, with the doctor quotes, right? First, do no harm. Here at Tidal Gardens, we go one step further to try and make it even easier on the corals coming into the facility. We have these 50 gallon Rubbermaid stock tanks with small lighting systems and a micron filter. We like to hold them for a day or two before dipping them because many of them are plenty stressed from their journey here and letting them settle in did wonders for their survivability. The nice thing about these systems is that they can be set up in a pinch and don't require any biological cycling because they simply don't need to be set up for very long. I don't know if anyone else does this for their new incoming corals, but so far we really like the practice. Moving on, the second goal for a coral dip is to actually be effective at killing the pests that I'm trying to screen out. It seems pretty obvious, right? As we've just stated, dipping corals is inherently stressful for the corals. 
it would be bad to go through the process of dipping corals only to have it not be particularly effective at eliminating the pests. At that point, you're just putting corals at risk and getting no benefit from the treatment. Also, for you coral farmers out there, dipping is a very resource-intensive activity. Depending on the scale of the farm, it could take a whole lot of man hours and materials to do the job properly. If that effort is sabotaged up front by using effectively the wrong tool for the job, that's no good from a business standpoint. Moving on again, goal number three for any dip. It would be great if the dip wasn't a health risk to the people doing the dip. There is an over-the-counter pesticide called BioAdvanced. Previously, it was called Bayer All-Purpose something or the other. I think you can get it still at any big box hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever. It is highly effective at killing lots of things, and it too is gentle on corals. It's a turbid, milky solution, so you really can't see very well what you're dipping, but that is the most minor of quibbles compared to the real reason that I hate this stuff. BioAdvanced is mega toxic. I would prefer never exposing my staff to it if at all possible. It's basically banned in every country except the US. And as a word of caution, if you decide to use this as a dip, take every safety precaution and just don't get it on you. I have no such concerns with reef primer. As I mentioned at the start of this video, it's basically a mix of potassium salts. You don't really want to be snorting the stuff, but it doesn't creep me out like BioAdvance does. Goal number four. Some dips are more involved to use because they leave a residue and the corals need to be thoroughly rinsed off before returning the coral back to the aquarium. Some of these residues, if not properly rinsed from the coral, can poison nearby desirable inverts, such as cleaner shrimp, emerald crabs, snails, or that prized tridacna clam of yours. What we started to do was to have a main dip container, but then a rinse container for those corals to go into once it's done. Some of these dips though, they require the use of not just one extra rinse, but a second container, sometimes a third container. That is now bordering on pain in the butt land, and when things reach that point, there's a real significant risk of the job not being done properly. Reef primer, we do still rinse it, but it's not nearly so bad on that front. Goal number five, the last goal that we want to talk about, is I'd like it to be clear so I can observe what's happening with the coral. Observation is easily the most important skill to develop as a reef hobbyist. Every day, I try to take a little bit of time just to look at the corals in my collection because if you've been doing this long enough, you can tell when something just isn't right and at that point it might be a good time to do a prophylactic dip. Now while the coral is in the dip, that's when you can really see if there was trouble brewing because a lot of pests can hide in plain sight, but once the dip starts to do its thing, it makes them much easier to spot. If you're working with a particularly cloudy dip, it unfortunately removes that a very important tool from your arsenal. Now that we've covered a general overview of things that I look for in a dip, let's talk about what Reef Primer specifically claims to deal with on the label. It specifies the following. It'll handle zoanthid eating nudibranchs, montipora eating nudibranchs, acropora eating flatworms, bristle worms, zoanthid eating spiders, red flatworms, those are planaria, hair algae, rapid tissue necrosis, slow tissue necrosis, bacterial infections, and others, it says. That is a lot that it's supposed to cover. I have some experience using it for some of these pests and ailments, but not all of them. Starting first with the nudibranchs. They are super difficult to handle, especially the Montipora eating variety. The zoanthid varieties, they're not exactly fun, but they seem more susceptible to dipping. The Montipora ones, though, are incredibly tough and incredibly persistent. There are some dips that kill the nudibranchs better than reef primer, but they are also sometimes super rough on the corals, and then on top of that, need that extensive rinsing like we talked about before. 
I know of some places that would rather discard any Matapora frag or colony that gets the Nudibrox. They are that bad. Reef Primer may help with them, but realistically, I don't know of a great solution to Matapora eating Nudibrox. There are a bunch of imperfect solutions, and perhaps some combination of techniques will be successful for you. If you struggle with these pests, you are in good company. They are that tough. Bristle worms. Real quick, I happen to like them in my systems. My guys, they hate them. Either way, Reef Primer kills them in a few seconds of exposure. Next on the list, hair algae. So this one's a curious one because it's not something that I would go out of my way to dip for. In mature systems, it tends to sort itself out. In my experience, it is more challenging for me to keep it alive than for it to go away on its own. Now, I guess if you're having a problem with it growing right up onto your frag plugs, like for example, between zoanthid polyps and things of that sort, then yes, I think in that situation, a dip like reef primer could be helpful. Let's talk about the bacterial stuff. I haven't tried dipping a colony that was going through repetition necrosis. When the flesh starts peeling off, at that point, I try to cut off the healthy pieces and mount that for future growth. So I really can't comment on Reef Primer's effectiveness for that particular condition. I think a coral is way too stressed out for dips at that point. I have anecdotally heard from others that it's helped their corals that were receding slowly. Things like LPS, for example. Again, not something that we look to do, but take that data point for what it's worth. If Reef Primer has some antimicrobial properties, obviously that would help an infected coral, much like any kind of antiseptic dip like iodine. Where I really think that this product shines is how it handles flatworms. It states that it can kill off acropora eating flatworms and red planaria flatworms, but I will also throw in there the general, what I call an LPS flatworm that plagues all sorts of corals. They can show up on mushrooms, whatever. They're kind of these brownish, larger flatworms. These are the types of pests that I'm most trying to screen out when I dip. Acropora eating flatworms especially are no fun. A lot of dips sort of bother flatworms and you're kind of hoping that they fall off of the coral, but this dip kills them. And it does so fairly quickly. It's as if the dip explodes them from the inside out. With any kind of dip, you're going to have to do several extra dipping sessions later to knock out the ones that hatch from eggs because eggs are basically invincible. Knowing that it destroys the adults is very encouraging. I have found that amongst all the various flatworms, the acropora eating flatworms are much tougher than the other varieties. Just about anyone that keeps Acropora will have some experience running into these guys and not a fun time at all. It's the double whammy of Acropora being sensitive to dips and that flatworms being especially tough. Still, I'm very happy with the effectiveness on this dip on Acropora eating flatworms. Noticeably absent from this list of critters are Acropora bugs, whether they be red, black, white, whatever. It is very interesting because it's not like reef primer can't kill crustaceans. It super kills certain ones, such as amphipods, but there's some others that are just simply unbothered. Obviously, I wish could kill these acropora bugs, but also these mini mantis strip looking guys, which I had to look up, but they're from the genus Tenadacea. These guys are not coral pests per se, but they make these mucus tunnels right at the edge of the corals, and that buildup of detritus bothers the coral and can cause recession. So yes, ideally it would kill these guys too, it does not. Luckily, there is another product that covers this gap in coverage, that being Interceptor. It is a prescription medication for dogs that is effective in killing off pretty much all crustaceans in your aquarium. It's a whole tank treatment. A few rounds of Interceptor and the bug issues are gone for a very long time. Again, I've said this a couple times in this video already, but there is no magic bullet preventative treatment, but Reef Primer covers a lot of different situations and the ones that it doesn't can be handled well by another product. Okay, 
that does it from here. Thank you again to the paid sponsor of this video, Polyp Lab, and thank you for watching. Until next time, happy reefing.